Hi, I'm Martin Bruchot, and I'm a master gardener. On today's episode, I want to talk to you about blood oranges. I'm going to talk to you about three different varieties of blood oranges that most consumers have never heard of. But I'm going to talk about one specifically. Why? Because if you're dealing with any blood oranges in your area or you're seeking a blood orange, the blood orange tree that you're normally going to find is going to be the Moro blood orange. But first, let's talk about these two that I have in my garden. Now, first of all, I want to get one thing out of the way. Blood oranges are uh, very hardy in zones 9 through 11 and mostly grown in Southern California. Now, I live in Northern California, Sacramento, the capital of California. Now, to the right of me here, you see a blood orange, but not any blood orange. This is a sanguinella blood orange. To the left of me, your right, you see a Moro blood orange. Now, this is the blood orange that most of you have come to know. Now, the Moro blood orange has a very deep purplish red flesh and it's very delicious and you can do all sorts of things with the orange in itself. And you may even find that the peel has a little bit of bite to it, it's a little bit of bitter. Now, there's three types of blood oranges. You have the Moro, the Toraco, and the Sanguinella. Now, most of you have never heard of the Toraco blood orange. In fact, most of you have never seen one. I did, and I missed my opportunity to grab it right away and add it to my gardening collection. But I'll be looking closely on the market to make sure I do that in the near future. Now, to the right here, what you see is you see a Sanguinella blood orange. The Sanguinella blood orange is a beautiful tree. I've had this tree uh, over two years now and uh, it's now uh, coming into a lot of fruit on the tree. Now the oranges on this particular tree does not get that big. They're sort of average, but uh, the tree is a very uh, vigorous grower. However, I want to compare something for a moment. Now I've seen on social media sites and gardening channels where the uh, individuals have been asked, my tree is growing very slowly. Um, are moral blood oranges or blood oranges in general, are they slow growers? And I've seen the author say, yes, they are. Now, this is very important to listen to the information that I'm about to um, convey to you. Um, many times we get information from individuals who um, have no um, real information on a specific subject matter, in this case, blood oranges. So I'm going to refute what the author of that uh, channel stated, and I'm going to give you the correct information. Blood oranges are very vigorous growers. And Moro, out of the Toroco and the Sanguinella, are the fastest growing blood oranges. And when I say grow fast, they'll grow right before your eyes. Their roots are very vigorous. Now, this plant here was planted three weeks ago here. It didn't look like this. It looked pretty much like this. And now you see all of this growth and a lot of new growth. Here's the key. First of all, in order for a citrus to grow at a good enough rate to get to a, a point where they're going to produce a good amount of fruit, they're going to need leaf production. Leaf production is going to come by way of having a higher nitrogen per ratio, nitrogen content in your soil around the specific tree. This is very important when it comes to the uh, blood orange, okay? Any citrus for that matter, but we're talking specifically right now about the blood orange. So when you first plant your tree in your garden, understand something. The amendments that you use in the ground versus in a container are different. In the ground, you're gonna be adding topsoil and you're gonna add some manure. Okay, it may be a good bag of already degraded compost. That's okay there. But when it comes to a container, none of those things you should be adding to your container. Your container should either have a cactus succulent mix with a citrus mix and uh, or a, something that's going to help it with drainage, such as some small to medium uh, bark. And you can add that in there, too. And that's going to help with drainage in a container. But there's two other ingredients 
Okay, one's a, a soil amendment and one's a micronutrient. And a lot of people have never heard of these things and I've never revealed it on my channel. And I'm not gonna reveal it now because this information is going to pertain to those who follow me on Patreon and those individuals will get this information if they ask for it. This information is very critical. It'll help your trees grow three times its size in just one given season. Three times the size. Now you folks have watched my channel long enough to know that my trees grow relatively quickly. I've had uh, other famous YouTubers reach out to me and say, how do you do it? And when I tell them, they sort of smile and say, we figured the type of man you are, we figured it. So here's the key. If you want more leaf production on your uh, trees, leaf production is going to make a big difference. Why? The more leaves you have, the more the tree can use the sun's energy to create food through a process called photosynthesis. This is why it's very important to have a higher leaf count on your trees. How do you get it? So here's how do you get it? Fertilizer. You must make sure that your nitrogen is higher than your phosphorus and your potassium. So when you are feeding your tree in a container every month, Again, if you have trees, whether they be fruit trees or citrus trees in containers, you must feed them on a monthly basis. Watch this now, 12 months a year. You understand? I would say 365 days out of the year, but then again, organic fertilizers are going to last about three to four weeks on average. So this is why you must feed them every month. 12 months out of the year, you should be feeding your trees. Now, don't get me wrong. When it comes to the winter months, the fall, autumn, you can cut that fertilizer in half, okay? Because the tree is focused on everything on the top. When it comes to citrus trees, everything on the top of the root structure is where the focus is, developing that fruit. Now, when it comes to spring, you wanna get back to the roots and the leaves. That's very important, okay? Make sure that you uh, start fertilizing your trees around February 14th. They call it Valentine's Day. But I'm telling you that that's the time to fertilize it so that by the time spring hits around March 20th to the 22nd, your tree has already absorbed that fertilizer and it's gonna hit you with a ton of blooms, which your tree is going to keep. And one of the things you notice when it comes to your trees, if you don't fertilize it on time, it'll bloom and the blooms will drop because it has no additional nutrients to keep the tree healthy and strong enough to hold on to those blooms. It takes energy to hold on to those blooms and it takes energy to produce them. So the key here is a higher nitrogen fertilizer. So let's say for instance, you have a nitrogen that's 15, you have phosphorus that's 10, you have potassium that's five. That's perfectly well suited for this tree. Hopefully you're using a fertilizer that's made for acid loving plants or you're using a high quality fertilizer and you can always add an amendment in here so that you could lower the pH. OK, I've shown those products before and we'll get back to them another time. And then when fall comes in autumn, you want to make sure that you have even numbers, 15, 15, 15 or you can drop, if you got all the leaf production, you can drop the nitrogen. And so the nitrogen becomes, let's say five in the potassium and the phosphorus in the potassium becomes 10, 10. So five, 10, 10. You can focus on that now because now you need to focus on the fruit and the production of blooms and so forth, okay? You folks, do you follow me? It's quite simple. So unbeknownst to many of you gardeners and what you've been told and been misled to believe, the moral blood orange, out of all the three blood oranges I've mentioned, one, Taraco, Sanguinella, and Moro. The Moro is the fastest growing blood orange out of them all. In fact, the, the, the blood orange grows just as rapidly as a tangelo. Some people say tangelo, a tangelo, okay? And tangelos grow very fast, they're very prolific. You're looking at a tree right now. And come next year, this tree will triple in size. I guarantee you. Make no mistake about it. And I do have one in the container also. So we'll do the comparison between the one in the container and the one right here. Both the same age, same height. 
since so less can I carry on. Also remember this, if you're gonna grow a Moro blood orange or blood orange period in the ground, they can get 10 to 12 feet tall. If you're growing them in a container, provided the container is large enough, those trees are going to get anywhere between six and eight feet tall in a container. Now I notice that people are putting their trees in wine barrels. Folks, I know it may look nice, but truth of the matter is, trees are not meant to be in wine barrels forever. It's the reason why you saw me over the past 10 years throughout the YouTube community. I have grown them in wine barrels, yes, but I have also grown in knowledge. You see, wine barrels as a whole are between 55 and 60 gallons. And that depends on the maker of the wine barrel. When you cut them in half, now you're left with 23 to 24.5 gallons. Now remember, wine barrels are more wide than they are shallow when it comes to a half wine barrel. So you don't have a lot of depth which means that after about two to maybe three years at the most, if you're growing your trees right, the roots are gonna become so vigorous that they're going to engulf the entire space. So therefore, they can't grow downward anymore, stunting the tree's growth and possibly killing the health of the tree. That's gonna be the issue you're gonna be faced with. Here's what I suggest you do. Make sure you look for something that's gonna be at least 40 gallons. See, 40 gallons are not only wide, but they're very deep. So therefore, you don't have to worry about adding soil and pulling the plant out of the pot and trimming the roots. It's going to be suitable in there, provided you're growing a dwarf or a semi-dwarf. A dwarf variety in itself can get up to eight to nine feet tall in a container, believe it or not. But... The goal here is making sure you use soil amendments that you don't ever have to worry about refreshing. Yeah, I got a soil amendment and those two special miracle ingredients I use. You folks will never have to take your plant out, cut the roots and add more soil. The only thing you need to do is add topsoil, not topsoil, but a compost. You can take your compost and mix it with some citrus soil or azaleas mix, and you can mix that together with some more cactus mix and top it off every year, which is a good thing, okay? So now that you know how to feed your trees, citrus trees to be exact, Moro blood oranges, sanguinella blood oranges, Taraco blood oranges. This is a prime way of how you get these trees to grow to optimum levels and condition. Optimum heights also. And I'll tell you right now, um, if you checked out the photo that I put in about this particular um, blood orange, the sanguinella, you'll see how vigorous it is. And please do yourself a favor. Do not prune your citrus trees if it's less than three years old. Now, if you see some water sprouts coming up below the graph line, yes, take them off immediately, okay? But other than that, do not prune your citrus trees. Your citrus trees need this lusciousness. It's actually what protects the entire base or the trunk of the tree from the scorch of the sun. A lot of people are invested in IV Organics products. You don't need IV Organics. What you need to do is go to the store, your local home depot, okay, or Lowe's, and buy you a water-based white paint. That's what farmers have been using for years in the orchards. And you simply paint your tree. And you don't have to worry about the sun scorching your trees. You can put two coats on it. It's cheaper and you'll have that paint for a long, long time. You don't have to spray your trees with things to protect it from the sun. I live in Sacramento. And although I'm not in SoCal, Sacramento can get up to 150, 15 degrees every year also. And we deal with a lot of heat waves out here. I have not had my plants, citrus and fruit trees, nothing in my food forest that has been damaged by sun or look like it has been struggling. And here's the key that you folks have been waiting on. Most of you, I see you going out with a watering wand and you're watering your trees. That's a huge no-no. You know why? If it's 105, 110, 115 degrees outdoors, you're not going outdoors. 
So therefore, you're not going to water your trees and you're going to say, let me wait till this evening. When the evening come, you've eaten and you're tired and you're like, ah, I won't do it. Bad, bad practice. You need to make sure invest in a drip irrigation system so you can properly water your trees again. Water your trees when they want it, not when you want to. They need this water on a consistent basis. And with water, trees go through what they call transpiration, like adults or humans go through what they call perspiration. They release water when it's too much or when it's too hot. OK, bottom line, you need to feed your trees properly and you need to make sure they're watered properly until next time. I hope you folks have gotten a great deal of information out of this tutorial. This year, will I produce any more blood oranges? Not this year, because the four that came with it, I took them off immediately and tossed them into compost. Why? Because at this time of year, and the fact that I've just planted it, I wanted it to focus on what's going on under the ground. Because this time of year, these trees are focused what's on top of the ground and it's usually the fruit and any blooms if necessary. In this case, we're going to force it to focus on the root system, get itself adapted and uh, we'll be OK until next time. Take care of yourselves and each other. And I wish you all well. I know I certainly will do the same. From my heart to yours. That's how you literally grow citrus, the blood orange to be exactly. Shalom.